Hello, I'm Rand Selner. I'm the Senior Staff Architect with Home Architects. And this is Passive Solar Home Design Principles 101. <clears throat> There's a four-step process involved with path, Passive Solar Home Design client lifestyle understanding, site analysis, site and floor planning, and 3D elevation creation. Client lifestyle understanding. Uh, different people want different things, so you can't design in a vacuum. You have to understand what their desired activities are, their desired spaces and rooms, the spatial adjacencies, in other words, what kinds of space you want next to what other kind of space. Construction cost, appearance and durability, desired views, preferred materials, and social and privacy aspects, and actually a lot more. Now let's take a look at uh, site analysis. It's important to understand what's going on on a particular site. Here's a north, there's a south, there's east, there's west. Also, there's building setbacks on almost every site, no matter how big. And it establishes this uh, invisible area called the buildable area. There might be a house over here, on a neighbor's house over here. Prevailing breeze quite often comes from the uh, southwest, if you're in the eastern side of the United States. But that can vary depending on where you're at in the world and or in a microclimate. Here's the morning sun rising in the east, moving around towards the south, at least apparently towards the south at midday, and then uh, at the late afternoon, uh, on the sun on, on the horizon as it sets. This situation, we have cars moving on the street, creating pollution and noise over here, and trees over here. Okay, let's take what we've learned from our client uh, requests uh, and also the uh, site analysis and apply it to site and floor planning. You really can't create a floor plan without understanding what you're looking at and what's what the orientation is on the site. For instance, if you had a, a house that you wanted to orient so that it had a very long east and west exposure, that's really not very good. It's bad because uh, for passive solar because the sun's rays are nearly horizontal. Uh, the sun uh, is setting or rising and the, the rays are almost horizontal. So how do you prevent that from striking the house and coming directly in the house? That may not be a good thing depending on what type time of year it is. Let's try a <coughs> expansion in this direction which results in minimal east and west walls and maximum southerly and northerly walls. Uh, that's much better. That's very good for passive solar because you can control southern exposure the easiest with roof overhangs and other features. In this particular arrangement, this is the best view direction uh, and for the prevailing breezes as well. And over here we had noise of the road. And, and so if this ends up being a general configuration of the main house, and it could be have ins and outs, it doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle, but if that was the general configuration, that's probably not a bad way to begin. In this particular site analysis, the best orientation of major glass and windows would be towards the south, towards the view of the trees, and also because you control the sun best. So let's install a note here with this blue bar to indicate that's where we probably want to have most of our uh, main glass areas. <clears throat> now what about the east and the west? We still are, even though that's a fairly short wall, it's still striking the uh, wall and what are we doing about it? Um, well, we could install trees and bushes to help control that as well as some other architectural features uh, to help uh, diffuse the impact on that western exposure and while we're at it we might as well do that also on the eastern exposure so now we're starting to get a pretty good orientation. <clears throat> now this is a great location for a garage because uh, you get cold north winds in the winter and also uh, this will buffer the sound 
of uh, vehicles passing by, as well as privacy. And then here might be some paving, a driveway and backup area uh, between the house and the street to connect you to that with your vehicle. So we're starting to get a pretty good idea of some orientations and how things work when a site configuration works like this and if the various spaces result in a configuration in, of this type. Let's take a look at the rear uh, or southerly orientation. This start with just a big blank wall. Okay, nothing in it at all. What do we do? Well, let's put a normal roof overhang on it to start with. And uh, it might be nice to see out, so let's cut some windows into the wall. And uh, let's also put some doors in there, maybe glass, so that you can get in and out of the house and have a nice view and maybe have them operable so you can admit nice breezes during pleasant weather. And possibly because of the height we have, we might even be able to put in some upper windows. That's called a clear story. Um, <clears throat> at what happens uh, for a shade study, uh, you get some nominal uh, shade from a normal roof overhang of about two feet, which is nice, but it's not going to take care of all of the uh, glass areas. You need to really protect all that glass, particularly in the summer. Uh, so if we did an extension of the roof overhang here at a higher level, uh, it might result in a shade pattern like this. And that starts really helping a lot. We're really covering all of the tall glass and uh, a chunk of the other uh, glass areas below. And you want to protect that glass during summer weather. You might even want to consider putting in some eyebrow shade elements here, uh, kind of like eyebrows on a face uh, with the person's eyes being the windows in the house because eyebrows perform an excellent function on our faces. They help shade your eyes from the direct uh, sun. So that's what they could accomplish also. Let's take a look and see what kind of shade we can get from that. Oh, that really is nice. So we're now we're protecting a substantial portion of the glass with these architectural elements of uh, roof overhangs and eyebrows. But what about the rest of the uh, wall and glass area? It'd be nice to be able to protect that uh, and plan for that. Well, we have trees, so shade from these trees, and if we didn't have them in the right spot, we could plant them and selectively prune them carefully to make sure that the upper uh, leaf and uh, limb areas can help cast shade onto the house uh, to protect it during summer and also admit lower winter light into the home. That would heat the floor, and when the floor gets uh, hot, then it will radiate heat up in the house. Uh, as a thermal mass factor. Now let's take a look at some examples. Here's uh, the Home Architects Falconcliffe Lodge in Cashiers, North Carolina. And if you look very carefully, you can see that actually sun shadow is almost precisely covering uh, the glass areas. You can see on this one window, it's exactly just under the window. So this has been calculated very well. Uh, this is the Eagle Mountain area in Lake Toxway, North Carolina, also designed by the Home Architects. And uh, as you can see, the nice shade provided on a lot of tall glass back up in the home area there. This does a very good job of also protecting that glass uh, during summer. So <clears throat> there's several key things involving passers, passive solar home design. Uh, designing for real people, uh, this is something that you don't just take off the internet. It needs to be very carefully programmed to make sure that the considerations needed for a specific client are handled. Next, uh, you need to understand the specifics of the sun path, breezes, streets, and other homes and activities and environmental features, uh, both natural and man-made, so that you can respond to those with your design. Next, face the main walls to the south if at all possible and put the main glass also towards the south if possible. Control the sun with architectural shade devices and this has been Passive Solar Home Design Principles 101 by the Home Architects. If anyone has any further questions, you're welcome to contact me.